Good morning. This is a short intro because this is a really long video. It's longer than I wanted it to be, but it is shorter than I thought it was going to be. In this video, I am opening books that I bought in the month of February. If you have seen my 2021 book goals, you know that one of my goals was to put myself on a book buying ban for every other month. Well, my birthday is in February, so I maybe went a little harder this month than I should have. But either way, this was one of the months that I was allowed to buy books. And boy, did I buy books. So sit back, relax, see the crazy stuff that I got. The uh, camera quality switches quite a bit because I had to film some of these things at night. Uh, but that can't be helped. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy watching me freak out about books that I myself picked out and forgot that I ordered. This is the least flattering lighting that has ever existed in this room, and I am so sorry for that. There is literally nothing I can do. I've never gotten a fairy loot box before. This is my very first one, and it's probably going to be my last one because they're very expensive because they come from the UK, and I am not in the UK. I don't know if you could tell by my southern accent that I don't live there. Um, but I'm really excited because this is the, like, Legends and Lore box? Or was that what Owlcrate called theirs? Because they both had the same kind of theme for January. If I just kept my Owlcrate account, would have ended up with the same book. But I think this one's going to be very pretty, so I'm really excited about it. I am glad I treated myself and that it came in before my birthday. And that's what matters. I'm going to put a knife by my face. Ready? I'm going to try to hold things up because obviously my camera is like this big. Um, but I'm really excited. Ooh. See, it's like Greek mythology. See, legends and lore was Alcrate. I'm smarter than the average bear. Um, so it's like this very pretty spoiler card with these gods and goddesses on it. And I'm going to put that right away because I don't want to know what's in the box. I'll just find out as I pull it out. And the first thing in the box is a lot of little paper, so my cats are going to be very happy. Um, I'm going to try not to get that everywhere, but it is what it is. Oh, cute! Okay, the first thing in the box is this spatula, this wooden spatula, and it says, Did you know food is infinitely more scrumptious when you're in love? Lovely wars. That is an interesting choice from that book. Um... I didn't know what they were going to do to represent Lovely War. I read that in December in anticipation for this box. Um, but this is very cute. I hate that I'll never use this. I mean, I will literally never use it. Because once you use a wooden utensil, I mean, that's it. That's what it's for. So I will probably just hang this up, honestly, somewhere in my room just as art. Or I'll, like, put it on the shelf somewhere. But this is very cute. Like, that script is adorable. So that's, a, that's, love that. All right, let's see what I can reach next. Oh my god. Because I need another, like, book cover. Like, I need a, another hole in the head. But in a solitary life, there are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as stars once a year brush the earth. Oh, that's a gorgeous quote. Um, and this is very nice. This is a very nice, like, book cover. And it is one that zips, which I don't have. All the ones I've gotten from Alcrate don't zip. The ones I have don't zip. Uh, and that's usually not a bad thing. They're usually in my backpack to keep things from rattling around. But this is very nice. And it's nice and plush. It looks like it would carry a pretty big book. And I think this is from Cersei. It's um it's Madeline Miller. And I'm thinking this is a quote from Cersei. And the fact that it's got animals on it tells me. I mean, I've never read the book, but I know about Cersei. So this seems appropriate. It's gorgeous, though. And I love it. Um, and I can't wait to use it. It will go in my pile of book covers that I pull from. Okay, the next thing we have is, it's Cupid and Psyche. It's a trinket tray is what it says on the back. I bet this is cute. I'm excited. Oh, I'm going to need my knife again. We have to tape things up. It's a lot of tape. Do we need this much tape? I'm an adult. Let me have my stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And they gave me bubble wrap. I can't actually pop bubble wrap in the house because it scares my dog. Like, he gets very scared. This is gorgeous. This is everything I want in something that is supposed to represent Greek mythology. I was a Greek mythology, like, nerd in middle school. Like, I love learning about the different gods and goddesses and all their weird, wacky, like, shenanigans. Um, and when I read for classic 
last fall, like, I really enjoyed kind of getting back into that. Like, oh, yeah. Remember when people thought a war of our girl just because she was hot? Oh, man. It, it's just... Anyway, this is beautiful. I love it. Um, I have a trinket tray that's Frankenstein, too, and these are probably two of my favorite things that I've ever gotten in a subscription box. I honestly don't know where to reach because there's still this paper, and I don't want to see the book, even though I know what the book is. You know, I know what the book is, but I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> um, this little envelope with the little fairy loop thing on it. And this is... Oh, that's cool. It's a Medusa iron-on patch. I don't know what I'll iron it on, but um, that looks amazing. Oh, I know. I'm going to buy a motorcycle for my birthday, so I'll put it on my motorcycle jacket. Don't, don't mess with me. The next thing is a metal bookmark, is what it says. So, let's break into this. If it'll let me. Why does everything use a knife? No one tell my husband I was using a knife like this. He would he would be very displeased. Not because of any kind of like sexist bullshit, but because I literally almost cut my finger off right after we got married. And I think now he has a sixth sense for when I have sharp objects in my hand inappropriately. Anyway, metal bookmark. Oh wow, look at that. Is that Athena? I think it is, because it's she looks like a warrior and she's got an owl cut out up here. Like this is if you can't tell, is a cutout. Um, this is amazing. This box really is going absolutely hard. I'm so glad now that I actually signed up to get this one. This is so pretty. That art style is just amazing. It's got, um, oh god, it's not Art Deco. I, I know it's going to come to me the minute we leave this video. I'm going to remember what this reminds me of. But anyway, it's amazing. And I can't wait to display it on my bookshelf. Next is an art print. This is from Percy Jackson, which I have never read. Feel free to revoke my booktube card, but I've, I've just, I hit the end of that interest. Like, my age, when it started getting popular, was like the tail end of it. And I know I'd probably read it and like it right now. Like, I know I would, but I don't have the affection for it that some people do. The same thing happened with Harry Potter. Like, I read it as an adult, and I'm like, okay. But I don't have that kind of affection for it. But I'm sure that I would like this based on my love of Greek mythology, I just don't think I'm the target audience anymore, and that's sad. I, I, I mourn the loss of joining this fandom when it was in its heyday, because Tumblr gave me some good art. But anyway, this is very cute. This is Percy and Annabeth. Yes? Sure. I know Fairy Loot does tarot cards, um, and that is one thing I'm kind of sad that, like, I'm only getting the one, so I'm not going to have, like, a bunch of them, but I have the Four of Wands and the Three of Wands, and I do not recognize either of these people, so I will have to read the spoiler card to guess who they are. Okay, I think it's time to see the book. You better be worth it. There's paper all over my floor. Okay. Oh, the sprayed edges are like a gold color. Okay. Mm. I'm so excited. I really, I can't express to you how excited I am about this. Here's a bookmark. It's got the dude on it from the spoiler card. There's Fairy Scoop. I'm assuming is there like newsletter they include. I'll be looking through that just for fun. And it's lore. It's finally lore. I finally have it in my hands. And let's look at the different things about it. Obviously, this cover is completely different. And I'm going to be honest with you. The cover of the actual jacket does not do it for me on this new edition. I love the spine. That is amazing. Putting this on my shelf is going to be fun because that is very pretty. But this, to me, I guess isn't as eye-catching as the original one. But that's the thing about this is it has other stuff going on. So let's look at it. That's fantastic. I don't have any other book in my collection, and I have a pretty large collection that does this. 
um, with the design on the edges, and that's fantastic. I know I've said fantastic like 30 times, but I cannot express to you how much this is just making my heart feel so good. This is beautiful. Um, let's look at the book. Oh, it's got like yellow marble on the end. Oh my god, that's so pretty. <gasps> yeah, there we go. Yeah, pop off, Lore. Look at that. Hell yeah. This is, yeah. The games have begun and she's playing for her life, is what the spine says. And then we have this nice seal on the back. Um, this is amazing. Um, I've got this thing going where I kind of have books with foil on the front, like alternating. So I've got Hunger Games is up here. Uh, that is the Guinevere Deception Owlcrate Edition. I've got the Addie LaRue Owlcrate. And down here, where you can't see it, is the Joy Luck Club. Um, because they all have like foil on the front. So this will probably go on my shelf somewhere because that's just so eye-catching. I love that. And I can just alternate it if I feel like not being as, you know, I'm into Greek mythology. And then if you see this, it's just, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. And uh, there's also art on the inside. Um, I'm excited. I like getting things like this. Not that I'm ever going to put it up, but um, it's like a nice little secret to myself, you know, that it exists and they're like, oh yeah. I've got jacket art. Do you have jacket art? I, I treated myself to this sparkly, amazing edition of the book. And I'm so happy I have it. And I'm so happy I have all the fun little doodads that came with it. This is like the best. I am glad this is probably my only fairy loot because this is a very, very nice fairy loot box. I was putting everything up and I realized I probably should say where all of that fairy loot stuff came from. So like, here we go. Um, the first item in the box is this stunning trinket dish. Maybe that was the first thing in some people's boxes, but for me it was near the end. Um, with Eros and Psyche from the legendary love story between a mortal and a god. We hope this will be a mystical addition to your bedside table. It's very beautiful. Um, again, that's stunning. We absolutely had to include an item inspired by Circe by Madeline Miller. We present to you your brand new book sleeve featuring a stunning design by Chatty Nora. Carry your mythology tones around in style. Well, I don't have a lot of those, um, but I'll carry something in there. Enriching your bookmark collection with this eye candy. Let me find her. Let me find her. Yeah. By Mono Lime Art has done a spectacular job designing the enamel bookmark, which depicts Athena, ah, uh, goddess of war and wisdom. I know. I know my Greek gods and goddesses, man. I'm telling you. Preparing your ambrosia. Oh, my God. Okay, quick seg segue. We're good. It's the spoon. I mean, it's the spoon. Preparing your ambrosia. It's a wooden spatula from Katie Pletters. Pletters? Katie Pletters. I'm so sorry. I said that the way it is. Um. Anyway, we were in a meeting last night for class, and one of my classmates just randomly she goes, <laughs> "Not to get political. What the fuck is ambrosia salad?" And when I tell you that will remove your stress, just suddenly discussing the merits of ambrosia salad. I kind of want it now, like they may make it at the church all the time, because it's really easy. It's just canned food and marshmallows. Hmm. Next is, inspired by the actual book this month, is this iron-on patch of Medusa from Alyssa's World. I just, I, it's so pretty. Oh God, this whole box is fantastic. And the box wouldn't be complete without Percy Jackson from Rick Riordan, this classic art print. Illustrated by lovely ARZ28 is perfect to be hung on your wall. I will find somewhere for it. Or I'll find someone that might treat it better than I do. This month's collectible tarot cards are the three and four of wands. They are designed by the very talented ARZ28 and are inspired by The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. Yeah, that'd be it. I don't even own that book. Um, I should, but I don't. I think my favorite thing about buying books online um, for thrift prices is I'm almost always buying for a deal and not because, like, I need the book. I mean, obviously I need the book, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's because it's a good price because it's a thrifted book. But the best part is I never check again, and it's like a little surprise to myself about what's in the box because I have forgotten. I have put the receipt away from me. I'm going to pull out of this box willy-nilly. And we're going to see what's in store. Okay, so, first up. Heck yeah. Oh, wow, it's a Target edition. That's fun. And it is peeling like it has a sunburn. 
Uh, it's Louder Girls. That's kind of ironically appropriate, given the body horror nature of this novel. Like, I'm not kidding. Look at this. Look. What happened to you? What happened to you? Who did this? I have not read this. This cover is amazing. It has always been amazing, and I have been wanting to read this for a while. So when I caught a deal on it, sold. I, I still am con I'm very confused about the peeling. That is certainly a design choice. I don't think it's on purpose. I think something happened and damaged the book, and now it's revealing it like underneath as being a regular... It's like the coating that makes them soft, right? Like this is velvety, and then this is slick feeling. And I think the velvety stuff is peeling off. Unless that's on purpose. I really, <laughs> that is so weird. Someone tell me if your Wilder Girls book got sick and started peeling. Because mine did. <gasps> yes. This is the one I was like, I'm super excited about. Because I'm going to pre-order the sequel for my birthday. I know it won't charge until the book comes out. But like, now I have both of them. It's Axiom's In by Lindsay Ellis. I read this on NetGalley last fall. And I really loved it. Um, if you are someone who likes books about space that aren't set in space, if you like books about aliens trying to adapt to our ways of life, if you liked Independence Day and you like monster boyfriends, then boy, have I got the book for you. This is really good. And it takes place in an alternate history, like 2006. And just to whip us back to how old I am, um, I was a freshman. So, like, this is very fun to me. Like, the references of who's in politics and what songs are on the radio and what people are wearing. Very fun for me. Um, some people are going to see this as more of a history history book. Like, I view books written in, like, the 1980s now as history, like, historical fiction. Someone may read this and be like, oh, yeah, it's historical fiction about the early 2000s. And my soul will break when I hear that out loud for the first time. The next book in this box was Vinegar Girl by Ann Tyler. It is a Hogarth Shakespeare. So Hogarth Shakespeare is a, it's this plan to like publish a read, imagined Shakespeare every year. Um, I've got like three of these. I've got New Boy by Tracy Chevillier. I've got A Gap of Time by a person whose name I forget. And I've got um, Hagseed. By Margaret Atwood, which I'm really excited about. I need to go ahead and prioritize that one because that one's written about the Tempest and I just, I need to read it. It's my girl Atwood. I don't know why I keep putting it off. But anyway, this one is about the taming of the shrew, I believe, like the like cat character is a vinegar girl. Yeah, so I think this is, that's what this is about. I thought this cover was cuter. I think they had a different one that's like the hardcover, but this design is more what they were going for for the whole thing and this is what my hag seed books look this is what my <laughs> this is what my hag seed book looks like it's got the lines and stuff and so I just think this is really lovely and I don't have a lot of pink books weirdly I wonder if I should like take a picture of this for like Valentine's Day because full disclosure I know my birthday's in two weeks but Valentine's Day is coming up in three days from here now so yeah maybe this could be a fun picture for Instagram this is almost really just, this is a surprise for me because I've forgotten everything for this box. <gasps> yes! Okay, I have to read this this year because it's going to win Prettiest Cover. And I know I'm going to say that like five more times this year, if only five more times. But you can't tell me that this isn't amazing. It looks like an old book. It's Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff. Um, I have not seen the show on HBO. I've not seen it. We don't have HBO. But it looked so good. When I first saw the, like, the first teaser trailer that came out on Twitter, I was like, oh, I've got to see that. That looks amazing. Um, and then I found out it was based on a book. So this is the next best thing, obviously. TV show's good. We're going to read the book. Um, and they had it, and they have, like, I haven't seen it, and I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it, and I'm like, okay, I can afford it now. Here it is, and it's beautiful, and I just love how vintagey and beat up it looks like it, all the corners look like it's been damaged. This is amazing. It's so pretty. I just can't wait to read it. The, the, the best part about it, it doesn't have, like, deckled edges. Usually, you'd think if they put that much work into aging the cover, they would do, like, deckled edges. 
And no, they didn't. It's just, mm, chef kiss. I think I've only got, oh my god, I've got four more books. Holy, the next, wow, that's huge. The, <laughs> the next book is The Terror uh, by Dan Simmons. It's an AMC original series. I think these guys get stranded on a boat in like the Arctic and crazy stuff happens. It reminds me of like Stephen King things when I saw the advertisements on TV. This is another one that is inspired by some, something I saw a trailer for. And it's a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. This is a big boy. And it's got one of those step covers. That's certainly interesting. Um, and I don't know when I'll get to this. This is huge. This may be something I read in the summer because it's about stuff that happens in the cold. Um, and it's better to just read that in the summer. So I don't like get all in my head about it. The next one is The Witches of St. Petersburg, which I've heard about for a while, and it's basically about these witches that are also in the courts of the Tsar um, when Rasputin is around, and about, like, them doing stuff. I don't remember the exact plot, and I'm not going to read it to you, but the cover's really great, um, and I like historical fiction about witches. I find it compelling, so here we go. Okay, the next book is one that I've never seen anyone mention, but it pegged me immediately because of what it was about. It's Adequate Yearly Progress by Roxana Eldon, and it's about an English teacher. It's, it's just about an English teacher. So I am, uh, I'm going to read it because it's one of those, like, pat yourself on the back kind of things. I just want to see what it's like reading about high school and seeing how accurate it is. Um, we'll see. I think there's only one more book in here. Gina's going to like this one. I forgot I put this in there. Um, let's have a little faith in me. Uh, I have a bookmark that matches this up on the shelf up here. And it's, what's it about? Oh, yeah, this girl goes to Jesus camp to follow her boyfriend after he breaks up with her. That's fantastic. That's all you need to know about this book. That's all I need to know. I'm hooked. Um, and it's a nice hardcover. I, I tell you, sometimes you can get some really good stuff thrifted. Like, this is in pretty good shape. Besides Wilder Girls, like, peeling, I'm, I'm pretty impressed for the most part. Do I look tired? Because I feel exhausted. I've thought about these books for the last, like, week while I've been waiting for them to come in. And I actually technically got to the post office on my birthday, but that was a Saturday, so it meant I couldn't pick them up till today, Monday. And, um, I'll remember, like, one or two of the books that are in here, and then I'll forget, which is nice. It's like a treat to myself. Also, if you're wondering why the piano looks very depressing right now, it's because we're actually going to be moving the piano out as soon as it stops monsooning here in North Carolina. Um, it's been raining for, like, a month. It's just straight up and raining. And when it's not raining, my yard is a swamp. So it's not like we can load in a trailer, take this heavy piano and put it in there and then successfully get it out of the yard. So I've cleaned up books off. And now we're waiting. I changed the angle. Some weird stuff was happening. I can, I'm can i eyeballing my cat on the cat tree right now. And it's so help me if you jump on this table and shake this camera. Okay, the next one is thin. Okay, cool. Okay, this is... It's a long title. For colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. This is a play. Um, this is a script. But it's written kind of like um, free verse poetry almost. I saw this performed a couple years ago at a local community theater. It is very impactful. It is heavy. Um, the penultimate scene is like jaw dropping. But it's very good. I wanted to have it in my collection of scripts in case I decided to teach it one day. Um, because a lot of the small scenes in here would make good poetry to study. Excuse me, I'm going to stop again because my cats are playing with the paper and they're making too much noise. Another thing to note is just how pretty this cover is. I mean, that's gorgeous. Okay, what's next? Who's? Okay, cool. All right, this is a weird cover, but I wanted to own this book so bad that I didn't care. It's Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Look at the size of this, especially compared to, like, a classic hardcover. Um, certainly a choice. 
also a choice for it to be the carousel horse, even though I know that plays a, a big part in the actual story. Um, but anyway, something wicked this way comes is I read a couple years ago for Spookathon. It's about these boys and a carnival that comes to town, and the carnival is kind of like sketchy. So it's a fun like Halloween kind of read that I really wanted to copy in my library because I checked it out of my school's library. Um, but now I own a copy, so that's great. Okay, so that's three books. What's next? Oh, cool. All right, this is one of the ones where I know I have three of them. Oh, I hate when they do that. Um, this is Riley Redgate's Noteworthy, um, which I have not read, but I follow Riley Redgate on Tumblr. Not that I'm active on Tumblr anymore, but I was back in 2012, 2013 when she was writing her first novel, and I really enjoyed Seven Ways We Lie, which is her first novel. I own it on my Kindle, and I've read it, um, but when I saw this was available, I was like, I gotta have it, and I thought the cover was very cute, so we got a hardcover of Noteworthy. Next is Seven Ways We Lie. Um, because they also had a hard copy of this, and I thought, wow, I would really like to own a physical edition of this. Um, to be honest, this may go into a high school classroom. I think this would be a really good book for high school students. Um, and I already own it on Kindle, so, but I wanted a, a physical copy of it, and it was a decent price. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll just get another Riley Redgate book. I don't really know why I got this book besides the cover is beautiful. It says The Deepest Roots. Um, it's by Miranda Acevedo and I think it's just a weird ah uh, like it's a weird little story. I think it's got some fabulism elements. I don't know anything about it but I thought the cover was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen and I needed 10 books. Like, like I fully got this just because I wanted 10 books. So that and that's on OCD tendencies. Okay we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six books. So there's a couple more. Oh cool. Uh, this is The Steep and Thorny Way by Kat Winters. This is actually it's a retelling of Hamlet, right? Yes, this is a retelling of Hamlet. Um, and it takes place in Oregon in 1923. It's about Hannah Lee Denny, daughter of a white woman and an African-American man. Hank Denny, her father, a ghost. Greta Koning, Hannah Lee's mother. Clyde Koning, a doctor who treated Hank Denny the night he died, now Hannah Lee's stepfather. Joe Adder, a teenage boy convicted of accidentally killing Hank Denny. Members of the KKK and the townspeople of Elston, Oregon. Question, was Hank Denny's death an accident or was it murder most foul? I'm always looking for new interpretations of classic lit to be able to show to my students because I know that Shakespeare is not everyone's cup of tea. I love Shakespeare and I love a lot of classics, but it's not everyone's favorite. So this is a retelling of Hamlet. I'm going to check it out. If it's pretty good um, and nothing is too uh, crazy or maybe problematic, which I don't, I don't foresee that being a problem, uh, I will be introducing this into my classroom library. Okay, got a few more. Speaking of Shakespeare retellings that I'm going to put in a classroom library, Foul is Fair by Hannah Capen. Um, if you've seen this channel um, and you've watched my book recaps for 2019, you know that I read Foul is Fair in fall of 2019. I read it as an arc on NetGalley and I didn't particularly like it. I think I gave it three stars and that was a generous three stars, but I did accept that someone probably would. And the reason I finally just jumped on the opportunity to get a cheaper version of, I think I got a hardcover of this book, is because I mentioned the concept to my teacher that I'm working with and she said, oh, the kids would love that, about like a murderous girl gang. Like, getting revenge, the kids would love that. So, obviously, as soon as it became available, I bought it. So, this is almost immediately going into a classroom library. I don't like this book enough to keep a copy of it. But, it is cool to have for my students. Okay, we've got two more, and they're both paperbacks. So, yes. I'm 
I'm really excited about this one. Uh, it's Trail of Lightning by Re Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, she wrote one of my favorite stories in A Universe of Wishes, the anthology that just came out uh, about a month ago. And I have wanted to read this for a while. I've heard nothing but good things. I really liked her writing style. And this was affordable enough that I thought, cool, I'll read it. If I really like it, I'll get into the series. I'll read more from Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, I almost checked it out of the library, but then I saw I could own a copy. And it's just this really nice size paperback. And this is a gorgeous cover. Uh, don't know what's going on, and I love it. So... Yes, very excited about that. And that means I know exactly what the last book is. And if you guessed another Riley Redgate, you are correct. <laughs> it's Final Draft, um, which is the last of the, like, three available books they had. And it's the only one that I got in a paperback, even though they had the hardcover available, because this one aesthetically matches the others. Give me a second. Like, look at these two. And then look at this. They all, they all work together. The hardcover of this was, like, black and had like neon colors on it. It did not work with this aesthetic. These work together even though this is a completely different size and uh, shape and everything. And I don't know a lot about this one either. I actually, since again I'm not on Tumblr, I haven't really been on Tumblr regularly since I started college because I'm just so busy. Um, this is one that she wrote after I stopped going regularly. I knew that Noteworthy existed. She was finishing that when I started college. But I did not know anything about final draft. So that's going to be a completely new to me concept. I'm looking forward to it. So like I said, a lot of books to read and this was just the online stuff. I think I'm probably going to stop here. I think this is all the books that I've gotten online. I do know I have an owl crate coming in, but I, I don't really want to open that one in this video since I already did the fairy loot. It just feels like overkill to do that too. Unless everyone wants like an hour and a half book haul. I have some very interesting books and cats, clearly. What's up? That's Lady. She's a princess. Anyway, I'm gonna go eat now. So I'm not gonna show you the whole box, the whole Alcrate box that I got this month because I've already done the Fairy Loot unboxing and I liked that box more. Not that stuff in here wasn't amazing. There was some really fun stuff in here. But other people do Alcrate unboxings and like that's something that's really popular on their channel. And also they get like sponsorships for it or have like a code. So you should watch them instead. They'll, they'll show you the whole thing. But I am going to reveal the book now. So if you don't want to see the book, um, I guess just move on until you don't see me wearing this shirt anymore. And then it'll be done. Like, and, and I won't be talking about this book anymore. So this is the book for February. So I knew the book was going to be Gilded Ones, um, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, and I didn't immediately notice any differences in this book and what the cover was supposed to look like, but there is more detailing behind her head, um, and just these colors together look really good to me. She looks so warm and alive, and like the details are so intricate, and it carries on to the back too with a quote. Like this is just a really pretty, um, that soft feel uh, jacket, but the really fun part here, and I mean, why not have gilded edges? Like, of all the times not to have gilded... You know what? Never mind. <laughs> but the real kicker on this one is the, the naked hardcover because they did a foil design on it. And it's beautiful. And I love it. And it shifts slightly from, like, yellow to green. Um, and it says the gilded ones on the side. So this will probably go on display where I've got foil covers on my shelves um, because that's just fantastic to me. It's very beautiful. So this was the Alcrate book for the month, and this was the fun stuff they did to it. There you go. It's time to take a look at all the books I bought from Enjoy. And uh, I thought the fitting attire to wear for this was the sweater I picked up from that thrift store. Enjoy is a local thrift store that does not understand what they have when they price their books. And they're usually like... 50 to 25 cent for paperbacks and about a dollar for most hardcovers and they'll do half price book sales all the time because they have overstock. Now, you do tend to see an overwhelming amount of James Patterson books and um and Christian fiction uh, since it is mostly a Christian based uh, thrift store, but you take what you can get and again, these people don't know what they have. I have found a lot of uh, Reese's Book Club picks there. I got Where the Crawdads Sing and Such a Fun Age from there for like no money at all. 
So it's, it, I mean, it's worth it when you can find ones you really like. And it's been a great way to stock up on my library for my future classroom because they have classics in there all the time. Some of these are classics. I'll probably not put them on my shelves. They'll probably go straight into a box to take to school one day. So these are in no particular order. Um, and I'll try to explain on some of them what they are and why I got them. But most of them are going to be pretty obvious. The first one I got was Island of the Blue Dolphins. And you can see it's 25 cent. I read this in middle school and I think I read it again in high school and I liked it both times. And it's just a really classic middle grade. Uh, Scott O'Dell does a lot of classic middle grade and so this will either go on my shelves I have to my left that's mostly middle grade and children's books or again it'll go in a school library. That's that's the trick um, that I've learned from teaching is your, your students don't always read at grade level. So sometimes you might have to bring in, you know, middle grade books for the high schoolers to read. And that's fine. They should be encouraged to read no matter what their level. The next book I have is also 25 cent and it is The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. I already own this book. The next book is uh, by Alan Patton. I paid a dollar for this hardcover of a book that I was told to read in 10th grade and then didn't. And it is Cry the Beloved Country. This was one of the books my teacher thought her 10th graders would read. And we didn't. Um, this was the same teacher that thought we would read The Fountainhead. And we didn't. The only books I remember actively reading in that class uh, were Anthem and Night. And I loved both of those. So maybe she was on to something. We just refused to do the reading. Um, but I didn't own this book. And I knew that I hadn't read it in 10th grade. So this is only like potential read in case you want to teach it list of books uh, that will stay in my library here so that way again if I if I like it and I want to teach it, it it's there and available but they had it for a dollar like come on this book was 25 cent it was a paperback edition of Stuart Little by Evie White very cute little sketchy cover I own Trumpet of the Swan and Charlotte's Way Up uh, so another Evie White is nice to add and I've never read this this next book was 50 cent um, and it's going to seem kind of weird to folks, but it is The Mystery of Irma Veep and Other Plays by Charles Ludlam. They did this play like a decade ago at our local community theater, and I know because I'm friends with some of the actors and they share pictures. I knew nothing about it except it looked very surreal, so I'm, I'm down for that. I'm always looking for plays and scripts and stuff too because they actually read very fast. If you are looking to boost a count for any reason, Plays and scripts are really quick to read. Now, do they work better performed? Absolutely. Always go see a play rather than just read it. But, like, they're still really quick to get through. So, this will be a nice little thing to have and maybe read it for fun one at a time or something. I don't know. Again, I don't know anything about it, but it's 50 cent. And this is a really nice edition of this book. I think it was probably a required reading for some kind of class at the local college because it has a campus sticker on it, but it doesn't say what campus. And I'm inclined to say Wesleyan, but I don't know. Anyway, 50 cent. Next book I got was a dollar. It has no jacket. I'm assuming at one time it probably did have a jacket and uh, it has been removed before it was submitted. This was printed in Chapel Hill. Oh, cool. It's called The Devil's Tramping Ground and it's by John Harden. Yeah, it was printed at the University of North Carolina. And if you are a reader of YA novels, uh, UNC is where Legendborn takes place. So that's fun. Uh, but this is called The Devil's Tramping Ground and Other North Carolina Mystery Stories. So it's literally just a bunch of North Carolina-based spooky urban legends and stuff. I love that. And that seems like a short little summer read to me. Uh, so I got it. A dollar. I bought it. The next book I got is not in great shape. I can tell it's had some dust and possibly some mildew damage. So I may leave it out for a while um, and try to clean it before I put it with my other books. But it is uh, Love by Toni Morrison. And it's actually a really nice cover. And like the book itself seems like it's in good shape. It's got deckled edges, which I cannot stand. But I mean, beggars can't be choosers. But I... Like I've, I think I've said it in previous books, I am kind of not versed in Toni Morrison. I've only read Beloved, and so anytime I can find another one of her books to try to read is good. 
I do eventually want to read the beloved trilogy, as I found out recently, it's a trilogy, and um and I, and reread Beloved. Beloved's a really hard book, just FYI, very very tough to get through. The next book was Twenty Five Cents, and it is Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Rip Van Winkle, and the Spectre Bridegroom. Um, and I have read Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle. I have heard of the Spectre Bride Bridegroom. It's fully illustrated, so it's got fun little images and stuff in it. And it just isn't ugly like the actual edition of Sleepy Hollow that I bought on Amazon that was just a cheap copy that someone bound themselves and has spelling errors and is formatted weird. This is an actual book, and it has more than just Sleepy Hollow. It's got like a spooky tree on the front. You can't really see it, and uh, it's purple. So this... You know, I'll probably wait and read this in the in the fall, but it, it was nice to have. I like having classics available to read if I want to. The very next thing is very fun. It was 25 cents, and it's one of the best covers I've ever seen. And the fact that I found it in a Christian thrift store uh, should not be lost on people that are fans of this material. It is Carmilla, uh, and this is about the the vampires that love ladies. I found this for 25 cents at the Christian thrift store. But look at this cover. Look at that font. Look at the images. It's beautiful. Laura cannot believe that her strange night visitor is her friend Carmilla. Though why is she so repelled? Is there a horror concealed behind Carmilla's charming appearance? Harold, they're lesbians. This was printed in 71 if it didn't look like just straight up 70s. It, honestly, they should have gone with the full gothic cover and had her running around in like a, a bridal dress on the moors or something. But I was really excited to find this because I've been meaning to read this like every October for the last like five years. Ever since I've heard of it and watched the YouTube series. It's kind of like the modern version. But anyway, very excited about that. I've been having computer trouble all morning, and I've been trying to upload the what I thought was only 40 minute long video, and realized that I had forgot to put some videos in the proper order, which turned out good for me because I left out five books, because um, I went to enjoy twice, and for some reason I only included some of the books, and I just realized as I was cleaning, nope, got five more, so let me run through those really quick. The first one we have is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. This is for the Classroom Library. I already have a copy of its hardcover, so I'm keeping that one. The next is Bless Me Ultima, which is a kind of classic uh, taught book in high school, and I've never read it, so I, again, it was 25 cents. We buy it. The next book is Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. I have read the first Bridget Jones novel. I have not read the second one, so had to get it. The next book is The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris because I've never read it but I did enjoy the movie and I would like to know a little bit more about the source material and what it says. Last but not least we have Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. Uh, kind of a weird cover but I did not own this classic book so time to read it. Anyway now I think I'm done with all the books. Good grief. Hopefully uh, I can actually get the video to upload now.